What is going on everybody? Chuck here with VAP Performance and today I'm joined by my co-host Joe Goodno. Hola. Lead calibrator here at VAP Performance. Everybody clap for Joe. Brian clap. <laughs> Sinking the sound for the camera there. <laughs> and uh, today we are going to be talking to you guys about pulley sizes on VAP superchargers on, and we're going to just use Mustangs for a base reference here. And uh, you can pretty much substitute any of these numbers between Gen 3R or Odin. Picking pulley sizes for what you plan to do with the car, what fueling you would need to run with each pulley size, and uh, kind of where they all line out with what we offer. Yeah, aside from GT500, because all the pulleys we have in front of us here are going to be the millimeter style measurement and six rib made yeah. for GTs. So if we're talking GTs, uh, 2021 to 2011. Yep. This is what this video will cover. Your Coyote pulley knowledge base. Mm -hmm. So we'll start at the, the left end here, or the right end if you're on the camera there, I guess, but mm -hmm. uh, the far end over here with the 92 millimeter pulley. Big boy. The, the cheese wheel. <laughs> Cheesing, baby. I'll let you talk about this pulley. Why why does this pulley exist? So this, this exists because there's a there's a point with gasoline-based fuels, namely 91 octane, where you run too much boost and you just have to decrease timing so much it doesn't make sense anymore. That's your boy. That's the one that fixes the problem. So yeah. if you're in California where 93 is not even really available, mm -hmm. this is gonna be the pulley for you. And we've done numerous dyno tests with mm -hmm. the, the 92 compared to our standard 88, mm -hmm. and you're really not missing out on much. It's especially if you have real true 91 octane. Right. It's more so a problem on 18 to 20s where you're dealing with 12 to one compression factory. But with the 88, either we have to pull the timing out in the tune or the knock sensors are gonna pull it out. But you're gonna be at a lower timing advance than you would be on the 92 millimeter with less boost. Right, so realistically horsepower numbers, you're substituting boost or timing, the 92 it's gonna be happier, mm -hmm. probably gonna make the same It'll power, tolerate basically. poorer call. It'll tolerate poorer quality fuel. And you're gonna keep, uh, Keep the engine happier longer. Yes, yes. If you zip to the other side, we have a 66 millimeter grip tech, 85 race gas. <laughs> and if we're if we're well, we're gonna work our way down, here, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so next next is the 88. Mm -hmm. This pulley is the base pulley with most of our kids. So yeah. uh, this pulley is going to be what most people will run. 93 mm -hmm. octane compatible. Mm -hmm. um, this will work on an 18 plus with 93. It'll work on an 11 to 17, mm -hmm. 93 octane. This is the base pulley. On most setups, it's about 10 to 12 PSI. Yeah, depending on where you're measuring boost at. So that's the other thing here. We're talking about Coyote engines at optimal cam timing at wide open throttle at sea level, measuring boost at seven to 8,000 RPM. With, your, with this pulley, you'll observe 11 to 12 pounds. So you're telling me, Joe, that maybe the elevation I'm at the type mm -hmm. of exhaust I have, if I have aftermarket cams and what the cam timing's set at, all these mm -hmm. things can change how much boost the car actually sees. Yes, and they will also affect power. Oh. So this is why with these, we're not really going to get too in-depth with dyno numbers because that's a whole separate set of things where it's like different dynos, different elevations that the dyno's being run on, uncorrected versus STD versus SAE versus JIS and all the other correction factors. So yeah, 88 millimeter, 93 octane. If you have 91 and you're really confident in the quality or you're running boost stain, you could run an 88. But if it's just 91 octane, just stick with the 92. And then you kind of get your first separation here of pump gas pulleys. And then most of the kits are gonna come with are gonna be on right there. These two pulleys. This is, if, if you see a VMP supercharger out in the wild, chances are it's got one of these two pulleys. Now you kind of move in to the next section of pulleys here. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, what is about the 85 that makes it, you know, this, this group here that separates it from like the 88 and the 92? Mm -hmm. So the obviously blower speed is gonna be the thing that makes the difference there, but the increase in boost. So back in the day, ye old days, mm -hmm. the conventional methodology was if you're gonna run boost, it has to be eight and a half to one compression. Oh. Um, Sounds like a 304 Cobra talk. <laughs> exactly. Which for what they were doing, that was the right goal. But when we're talking about modern 11 to 21 Coyotes, we have onboard widebands, we have onboard knock sensors. The knock control strategy is actually pretty good. Um, that's where we can we can run boost on 11 to 1 engines. The, the cylinder head design and the bottom end tolerate it and 
everything's happy. So if we're talking about a stock compression 11 to 21 Coyote, this is a little bit too much of the spicy air yeah. for 93. If you're gonna run Boostane, you could run the 85 or the 82 if you're really looking to get crazy with stuff. But I don't, in most cases, I'd almost just rather be at the lower boost and run a tiny bit more timing. Then right. you don't have to mess around with changing pulleys and stuff. But these are a good option for guys like that that aren't quite at the level where they need E85 and don't have the availability or the uh, ready access to race fuels and they they just want to party a little bit harder. They got bored with the, the power of the kit made stock. The 85 and the 82 kind of fall into their own subsection of this is going to be uh, really pushing it on like a pump gas with boostane mm -hmm. or like a mild race fuel setup or something like mm -hmm. that, but not something you can just run on 93 octane. No, no. Pretty much not in any scenario. The only scenario you can run pulleys down in this range on 93 octane is if you're at elevation. So think in the higher parts of Colorado, no pun intended, um, New Mexico, Arizona, anywhere where your elevation's significantly higher. <laughs> I'll restart that so that no, no, it No, no, keep it. <laughs> Let it rip. Uh, <laughs> um, Cue the Snoop Dogg cut bridge. <laughs> all right, so these you can run at sea level with a little bit of boostane mixed in the tank with 93 or an aggressive boostane mixture with a 91 octane. These are very different from these. Yeah. This is a lot of boost. You kind of start stepping off the cliff when you hit the 70. Yeah, and it's not to say that you absolutely can't run 93 and boosting on stuff like this. It's just outside of VMP's comfort zone yeah. on 93 and boosting. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that I've seen someone run a 79 on a 2650 with 93 and boosting. It's, it's not something I recommend, so it's not something we're gonna see a lot of. Yeah. It's one of those things where when you're talking about this much boost on a stock engine or even a modified one for that matter, I just really want a I want the insurance and the reliability of a race fuel or E85. With this section right here, you're at the, the, at the top end of the spectrum, you're at a pretty good amount of boost for a stock engine. This, this is like where I recommend stopping on a stock engine. If you're one of those guys that's like, yo, I don't care if it blows and it takes out everything in the process, I gotta race this weekend and I need to win. Yeah. Okay, yeah, step into this range, but just also know that you're dancing with fire. I kind of feel like you get your next separation here. If we, if we were to group these into pulley categories, this is kind of like, I mean, you were just saying, you know, this is this is a lot for stock engines, stock head bolts, mm -hmm. but any of these three pulleys, you're pretty much going to need to be on E85. Realistically, mm -hmm. we're going to recommend you being on an E85 with a return cell fuel system. Yep. Um, and or race gas with, you know, sufficient injector headroom. And then like over here, this is like, you can barely get 1000 cc injectors to work if you have adequate fuel pressure. So like our fuel system, you're good with this with a 1000 cc injector at a reasonable RPM. If you have a, I don't wanna name names, but if it's a GT500 based fuel system and it's in an 11 to 17 car, this is your pulley. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a, a good system that has Wobbro 267s or Wobbro 274 pumps or the, the 285s, the Hellcat pumps, then like any of these pulleys in this range are good for you from a fuel pump standpoint. But from an injector standpoint, 1000 cc injectors are done here. Yeah. This is where you move into the 1200, 1300 cc range for injectors. Right. And you, at this point, you need, you need our style fuel system or four or any of the other big guys that have a, a or DW, anyone that has a fuel hat that has two good Wabro pumps in it, yep. or whatever fuel pump manufacturer you want that flows at least 600 liters an hour. And then kind of the last thing that I wanted to touch base on is what you can come to expect from a realistic belt slip and belt life, belt life longevity mm -hmm. viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Because these, Belt life and belt slip pretty much non-existent. Yeah, the belt's the, gonna last for a long time. And the only time you run into belt slip problems on these is when you don't have the right size belt on it to yeah, begin with. Right. Or yeah. something's drastically wrong. But having the understanding that if you run like a 66 or a 69 millimeter, mm -hmm. the chance for a belt to break, the chance for a belt to slip, the chance for the belt just 
to not last very long, mm -hmm. uh, it's something you have to like under, be understanding of. You're spinning the blower very fast, especially in a six rib setup, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's just it's you know a mechanical disadvantage at that point, I guess. Yeah, because you don't have the mechanical grip of the larger diameter pulley working to your advantage. Right. Um, that or an eight rib or ten rib setup where you're going wider on your traction surface, but. You better make sure you have the right size belt on it. You better make sure you have a good tensioner. And the only way you get around that is with elevation. So like every, I think it's 1,250 feet, account for about a pound of boost. Basically, think of it this way. 1,250 feet, 2,500 feet, 3,750, and I believe this would be 5,000 yeah. based on that calculation. So yeah, 75 if you're at 5,000 feet. Yeah. Um, and then I uh, maybe if you're in Colorado at one of the higher mountain areas you where it's 7,000 feet, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 7,000 feet, you can get down in this range. Just make sure you have the right size belt and be cognizant of the fact that if you ever go down in elevation more than like 1,500 feet, you're gonna have a lot of spice. You have to start going <laughs> up again. Yeah, if you trailer your car to Houston for TX2K. Remember to change your pulley <laughs> or you're going to be picking up more pieces of your car than you thought you were at the yeah, end of the track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I know this was kind of a long, long-winded explanation of, you know, what the different pulleys from BNP can accomplish and what you could kind of expect from each different size of the pulleys. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of what pulley is right for you, you know, where your car sits currently and what you plan to accomplish with that, even your geographic location mm -hmm. and, you know, what fuel system you're running. Hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of what pulley you need for the setup you have based on the goals you want to accomplish. If you ever have questions about your particular setup, give us a call. Mm -hmm. We're happy to walk you through, talk about your individual setup, give you a good pulley recommendation, walk you through the process and make sure you have a car that you're enjoying and that you're happy with and hopefully has a happy long life. Yeah. But uh, until then guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you guys next time.